What I've learned, Steve, is that, frankly, the messaging from across the European side of things has been very, very consistent on this issue. We heard from Donald Tusk ahead of this meeting here in Sofia. He wanted European leaders to come together and unite politically, economically, militarily. He talked about the capricious nature of the US administration. And those words were really winning support from other European leaders here, including Austria, Sebastian Kurz, calling them pointed but correct. We obviously heard from Merkel and Macron on trade. And again, the Belgian prime minister reiterating this point that they would not, would not renegotiate trade under any threat of tariffs. I had a chance to sit down with the president of the World Economic Forum, Borger Brenda, and I asked him about this united front from these European leaders. Here's what he had to say. Good that European leaders collaborate closely. I think it's also good that they collaborate to find um, sustainable uh, and the uh, best win-win solution uh, on the Brexit uh, issue. When it comes to the relationship um, with uh, the US, I think there are also no important negotiations going on on the trade side. I think there is a reality that there, is, there are different opinions on the Iran deal. And um, I think one just had have to cope with uh, this. So um, we are in a situation where there uh, is uh, a more fractured world. But uh, in a more fractured world, uh, you also have to incentivize more and closer cooperation. And there is not enough cooperation and dialogue in the world today. There is geopolitical competition, and um, that uh, is a new uh, reality, uh, at least at the level we're faced with now. Do you think, based on your experience as a diplomat, that this US administration has been largely responsible for the challenges in the transatlantic relationship? You know, the World Economic Forum uh, is an international organization that is impartial and neutral. And I think we can add more value in bringing the different players together and try to then address the pressing issues uh, than coming with uh, this kind of very strong uh, statements. Um, I think we, we all have to work uh, with the current uh, U.S. administration. We had also President uh, Trump uh, in Davos uh, this year. He gave a strong message uh, on um, the economy. And uh, there is, of course, no uh, a huge interest in what will the outcome be of uh, a summit uh, with Kim Jong-un in Singapore, if it's taking uh, place. What will uh, happen with the trade negotiations between the US and uh, China, the two largest economies in the world, when Vice Premier uh, Li He uh, arrives uh, in DC. No, and all this will have huge implications for all of us, because these are the two biggest military powers and the two largest uh, economies uh, in the world. Borger Brenda there, the president of the World Economic Forum, really tying things together quite nicely. When we hear this news about China potentially making concessions of up to 200 billion US dollars, it seems, based on some of the language we heard here yesterday, that although the Europeans are not willing to negotiate trade unless these steel and aluminium tariffs are made permanent, they are willing to renegotiate. And that is a slight softening of their stance, which, given what we're hearing from China, is a very interesting development, guys. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.